Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. It is I, Colton Robertson, and today I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? What up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. We are continuing our 52-year journey through film. We are halfway through the aughts, the 2000s, uh, the zero zeros, and it brings us to 2005. And this week we are discussing King Kong. Uh, and it was the first time I'd engaged with this movie in probably at least a decade. Mm. Uh, it had been a really long time since I'd watched this movie. And fuck, buddy, am I feeling good about it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was my first watch in quite some time as well. Um, you know, even as a kid, this movie made me cry. It was the first movie I ever cried in, ever. Um, so I... You know, even even as a youngin, I can appreciate this movie. But man, watching it now to like actually get all the details and yeah, all of the story the, of it all the intricacies is ah, yeah, this movie was was awesome. It's incredibly well done. Uh, you know, I I for some reason thought this wasn't going to be that good. Mm. Like there seems to be this perception of this movie that that's that it's not that good. Um, and I don't know, like, where I'm, where I'm getting that necessarily. Everywhere I've looked, it's pretty high rated. It's, it's pretty well, pretty well liked. But, uh, for some reason in my head, I was like, I feel like this is going to be a, uh, a downer along our 52 year journey through film. And so far, it's my biggest surprise. Oh, yeah. On, in the project. Like, I'm like, wow. Could just be, um, that's just the general gist for Kong or Godzilla movies is that, like, you know, they're, they're not real movies, whatever, you know, it's just, I don't know, maybe they're like in their own category, whatever, but, but I, I think this one, it, it breaks the, I think it, it breaks does that break stereotype. A um, yeah. And it's yeah. definitely a, a different Kong movie than, than any other. Like I, the one that I'm, was comparing it to the most was just the most recent Kong movie or maybe not most recent because I guess Kong Skull Godzilla, Island, but, but yeah, Skull Island. And, uh, and this one's just far better. Um, mm. like, um, I don't know. I, in ev in almost every way. Um, right. Right. You know, it's nice seeing our, our boy Loki in Skull Island and, and, you know, John sure, C. Riley sure. for, you know, for, you know, it's cool actors to see, but this one, like, I don't know. It's, it's just really it's well just done. Good on it's every just really level. well done. Uh, so let's lay the groundwork for the people. King Kong released on December 14th, 2005. Written by Fran Walsh, Philippa Boyens, and Peter Jackson. Directed by Peter Jackson. And Peter Jackson also directed the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm. Uh, just before conducting this film. And it feels like he really narrowed in his visual effects over the course mm. of the Lord of the Rings to get here. Because <laughs> uh, mm. I'll tell you, this is visually one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. I like I was watching it and at so many points... I was just like, oh my fucking God, this is beautiful to look at. Uh, it, I had so much fun. I couldn't believe it was three hours. Mm. Yeah, there were, I mean, talk about wallpaper moments with this. I mean, there were just, you freeze frame at almost any time in this movie and it's going to be, it's going to look good. Yeah, um, it is. Especially, I mean, my, my favorite. Um, is whenever he's on top of the Empire State Building or climbing up there. Like, I mean, the, the direction, you know, was, was just, they thought about where they were placing the camera, like mm. every time. And you could just tell, like, that no shot was just set up for pure, I don't, like, it wasn't lazy. Um, and it, I don't know, it was, ah. Some interesting trivia about him climbing to the top of the Empire State, State Building. The, uh, the CGI model of the Empire State Building took 18 months to create. 
while the real Empire State Building took 14. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, that's hey, and a lot he's more death around New York. Is a lot small. more death in this movie than I remember. Yes. I was like, wow, people are dropping like fucking flies. And that, I um, mean, I don't like. It feels like you know, in Skull Island, there there are some deaths, but it feels like a lot of them have you know plot armor a, a few times, or you know, they're they're kept around for a while, but. I mean, here it was like anyone could go at like any, any time. And I thought yeah, there were multiple times when I thought we might be losing Carl Denham or we might mm. be losing Jack Driscoll. Like I was like, I, I, and, and obviously is okay. You know, King Kong's there to protect, mm. but uh, beyond that, no one was safe. Mm. And yeah, uh, I'm thinking to the, whenever they were all on the log going across the, the mm. bridge and, and then Kong just, you know, picks it up and is just shaking them down <laughs> and you just see lit like people just dropping. dropping. And, uh, you know, you, you keep your your main characters, of course. You know, like uh, obviously, like not yeah, just true. that's not going to be how how some of them are going to go. But I mean, every character that that was somewhat big, like was given, I wouldn't say a glorious death, but they were given their own moment, like mm. um, it, it, for their death. Um, and the one I, I think to the most is I uh, Hayes. Hey, yeah, Hayes' death. Whenever he's you know him and and Jimmy, they kind of had their um, like a little, or was it Jimmy or Mike? The, the, was, the boy that was like, I'm not going to run, you know, I'm not going to run. I'm, yeah. I'm, Jimmy, Jimmy is his name. Um, and then, you know, he looks back at him and he's like, it's not about being brave or, you know, and then he's like saying like, no, just get out of here. And, you know, it was like, um, I don't know. They, they really gave, um, a lot of people their moment before they died. Um, which, man, I, yeah, this, I read a, I recently read a book by Tony Morrison. That's called like a, oh, playing in the dark. And it's like a, it's like a critique of, uh, literary works, uh, and the way they effectively use black people. Mm. And, uh, one of the, one of the molds that she describes in that book is a, a wise, uh, down to ride black man for a young white person as sort of a mentor who sacrifices mm. themselves for them. And it was kind of like a, yeah, yeah, that happens quite a bit. And, uh, this is definitely mm. one of the examples of it. And, uh, it, 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 it carries great mm. emotional weight. But ever since I read that book, I'm like, wow, yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. He literally was like, like thinking back to them on the ship before they were even uh, sailing off to the island, you know, whenever they're getting the boat, or maybe they were, they were already on their way. Um, but he was like, y you're not going to be here for the rest of your life. You know, like you got to get an education, you got to get smart, mm -hmm. um, you got to do something. And you know, they, they really built up their relationship and then just knowing that he was going to die eventually, you know, to give a, oh, give yeah. you that emotional weight. But absolutely yeah, not. And, uh, you know, this, this movie, if I had like any one critique, It'd be it's a bit long. Mm. Um, granted, I think that length gave us an opportunity to appreciate all the characters, not just our main cast. Like it gave mm. us a gave us a little bit more insight into Capital Anglehorn and a uh, and the the fucking actor uh, mm. played by uh, Kyle Chandler, uh, Bruce Baxter. Like all all these characters, you get to know them a little bit more because it's not a two hour movie. It's, mm -hmm. it's a whole three hour movie. And that first hour is fucking crucial in caring about this cast here. And I mean, whenever I think about this movie, um, like just before I even watched it, the moments I remember are, you know, him in New York, the, the planes or him fighting the T-Rex or, you know, like the big Kong moments, but like some of my favorite moments, like watching this, um, now were, um, whenever the captain was, was kind of going back and forth of like, you know, we got a, there's a warrant out for your arrest. So like mm -hmm. going back, taking you there. And then, you know, it's like the company He's like, I've, I've risked everything crazy. for this. And he's like, no, you've risked everything I have for mm -hmm. this. And uh, man, like you, there were so many just cool moments. Like, uh, kind of felt like, you know, jaws for a little bit on the boat, you know, with the captain or like, um, just at sea, you know, and the, the captain, I don't know what the look of the captain just like, he was very Jaws-esque. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, he's just very, um, 
which was cool. You have literal dinosaurs. You know, you have a moment where people are seeing them for the first time. And yeah, it's it's very Spielbergian. You know, mm. I think it I think it takes a lot of influence from Jaws and Jurassic Park in specific. Uh, mm. You know, and one of the examples. I mean, first, I when I clicked on this movie to watch on HBO Max, I was like three hours and seven minutes. I was like, wait a fucking minute! I do not remember this being three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but nevertheless, it needed it. Uh, because of all it wanted to give us with Kong and the way it effectively didn't introduce us to Kong until an hour into the movie, mm. which is a classic Steven Spielberg thing, you know, mm. <laughs> Get, getting us an hour into the movie and then going like, this is what it's all about. Uh, the dinosaurs <laughs> I mean, break out. Uh, we go chase, we go chase the shark. Uh, you know, like uh, all that starts to happen an hour into the movie and, uh, and then we get a full length movie with all of King Kong too for two hours, which is pretty fucking awesome. I uh And Kong is a true character in oh. this movie. Um and you know, I, I it's just really cool. He's played by Andy Circus, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, he played Gollum, you know, he's always playing these creatures, Star Wars, you know, he does Supreme Leader Snoke um, and yeah, he does so well, like, you know, just with his facial expressions and and uh and stuff like that which which is really cool you know that he's in the movie not as kong you know as like the chef or or just a, a crew mate you know that yeah. that is um or whatever which is which dude is i cool. love andy circus but, man he's yeah. one of my he's one of my favorite actors ever at like every time i see him on screen i'm just like fuck yeah it's andy circus and then when they killed my boy off i was like oh my god they yeah. got his ass oh that was th- some- those things i don't know what to call them but they that was nightmare fuel for me as a kid i hated those things i mm. felt like like just the fact that it was like all of his limbs and then like you know slowly covered his face so like he couldn't breathe and i'm like nah i'm like yeah that this like well as a kid i had to like look away like from watching this part of the movie like i hated this part of the movie those little i don't know what to call them but mm. blah earth suckers i don't know um, right world eaters i don't know some just nasty something terrible but uh and yeah, no there's some there's some freaky imagery in this movie but let's mm. let's talk uh let's talk the highlight of the movie and that's naomi watts as uh ann darrow mm. and her uh interactions with kong her relationship with kong you know mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of people like the king kong movies of old 33 76 the really old ones they they're essentially a very shortened story that is this mm. uh you know peter jackson went full full out on expanding it and making it an epic and truly did make it a modern epic like i don't know that there's another movie i can think of that's quite as epic as this you know in terms of length mm. the story what happens uh not worrying about giving you a happy ending mm. You the know, like that, it's a tragedy. This this movie's this is, a tragedy of the tragedy of King Kong, if we're being for real. Like this is a remake, you know, mm. of of Kong. Like Kong has been a character long before this. Yeah. And it's amazing that it, it feels like this is it's its own like it's its own thing. Whether it you know, he does stay true to the story or he made it much more grand, much more epic, I feel like this is it doesn't it doesn't sit with the other Kong movies um, mm-hmm. or the other Godzilla movies or absolutely not. And one of those one of those reasons is the the mutual understanding between Anne and King Kong. You know, uh, in the originals, Anne is not so loving of Kong, and mm. Kong's protective of Anne, but it's not in such an emotional in such an emotional way. Mm. Like this made their relationship a focal point of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever he he brings her up to the top of the mountain and they're looking out over the sunset together and stuff, he's holding her in his palm and she's sleeping on his arm. Like, oh my god, these moments are my favorite in the movie. But uh, he gets her up there and he sets her down and he pounds on his chest and roars and is like, "Go ahead, do your thing." <laughs> uh, and she does her vaudeville comedy performance and it's like, oh, that's uh, that's awesome. He loved that shit and the way he just kept knocking her over because he thought that shit was funny. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love that. I he was having that. a grand old time. I, you know, like he probably doesn't get a laugh that much at all. You know, that maybe maybe that was the first time Kong has ever laughed. You yeah, know? I don't know, um, and maybe that's why he took just took a liking to her. It was the first person to ever make Kong feel happy. You know, mm. I, you have 
I'd say if if one aspect that I like over Skull Island more than this, it was how like they treated the the native tribe, and it was more kind of a uh, the natives were more crucial uh, to the movie, but here they were like strictly enemies or seen as enemies, mm. you know, and it wasn't like uh, there was no peace really between uh, the natives and and the rest of the cast and. Yeah, um, it's it, that that was an interesting choice, you know, and uh I was like I was like, well, this is a little this is a little this could be a little problematic. Could not mm-hmm. have aged well. Uh mm-hmm. and I'd say that there were certainly elements of it that didn't. It felt a little it felt a little like uh and you know, it is set in the 1900s. Like it is set in very like very old times. I think they were being kind of plain about how white men would go about this. True. And probably in many cases still would. Um but yeah, like storming, storming the, storming the island with like their guns against the natives who have sticks. Mm. It's like, all right, guys, come yeah. on. Yeah. And like, I, I did appreciate that. Like we heard a lot of gunshots, but it always looked like everyone was firing straight up into the air. Like more mm. of like a, I'll scare you off, not actually kill you, which I'm a, like, I'm a hope that's mostly what happened. Uh, that's kind of how I'm taking it, just because mm-hmm. like it, it, it makes me feel about it feels better about the party that that we're uh, that we're taking in here. Um, yeah, I feel like one of the only natives to like that we really saw die from you know gunshot was the guy that the captain shot that was about to execute uh, Carl. Yeah, and you know there oh, it's yeah. kind of like got to do what like, you got to do in gotta, the moment. Gotta, yeah, got to got to save him oh. there, I guess. But but you know, I I'm glad that we didn't just see like a massacre, you know? I'm, yeah, I'm like I would have like been that. like I would have been like, "All right, maybe we need to turn this off and turn on something else. It's mm. a little too sad for me." Uh and it it does get real sad, you mm. know, for other, for other reasons beyond that. Um like every time I when I watch this, I'm thinking of Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. You know, what you call discovery, I call the rape of the natural world. And what a, man, couldn't really say it any better here. That, like, that's what I, like, the whole time I'm like, man, really everything we touch, you know, that's just, just doesn't really end up goes well. back to the matrix. It Agent goes back Smith, to... I was thinking ex- of the same exact thing. I, I, oh my God. I'm like, are we really a virus? You know, like that, like I, I was really like, I'm like, man, maybe Agent Smith was right. And I'm like, no, no, I can't think that way. I you can't know, think this, is, this way. This is just, just some greedy assholes that are, that are doing this, you know, like yeah, some greedy um, and Carl Denham, man, he was out for that check and that was all he was out there for. I would never short a friend, you know, I, here's, oh, two grand. Oh, sorry. It's the 29th, right? You know, to keep him on it's the ship. It's the 25th. And, Come on. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and the, the wife and kids. We'll donate the proceeds to his wife and kids. Well, they um, set the tone for his his lying his ass off very early on. There, there is a point early on in the movie where, like, uh, he's like, "All you had to do was look her in the eye and lie, tell her we were going to Singapore, not mm. not Skull Island." And uh, it even says from like then himself, on, I can't trust a word he yeah. says. He even says like, "I've learned to bullshit the bullshitters," you know, or, or something mm-hmm. along those lines. Yeah, something that he's like, that. like um, and man, you know the the first first time he said. Um, like we'll donate the proceeds to his wife and kids. It felt like a, a somewhat genuine moment for the first right. time. You know, the, you know, you have the other, uh, well, uh, whoever the older crewmate there, um, that, yeah, that was sitting remember. along, you know, here, here, you know, they, they started to tear up a little bit. Um, you know, and I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe he's, he's coming around, you know, on this. And then you hear him say it the second time. We'll here, finish like, the film. He didn't die for nothing. Essentially the exact same, exact same monologue again. Yeah, and it's, it's like he's just, he's just trying to find an excuse or, or something to, for, for him, um, to not put the blame on him at all. You know, because oh, yeah. all of this, like, well, yeah, like, if he does, and I can't, I can't blame him mm-hmm. in this moment, you know, like, uh, you came here to shoot a movie. Your crewmates die. If you don't shoot that movie, it's really, really for nothing. Like it, That's like, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get something on film. Uh, uh I mean, all, all of it was destroyed anyways, but at some know. point you got to cut your losses, you know, yeah. like as soon as one person dies, you turn the boat around. True. Well, That's- and, and here's the, I think ah, I forgot what character or what, uh, what moment this was, but someone was like, 
uh, they talked about discovery and they talked about how like that curiosity will get, will get the better of anybody, you know, like it, it like mm. the need to know, maybe it was Hayes, uh, or, um, whenever they were still on the ship and, and everyone else was going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was whenever they took the, the little boat and they were going out and, uh, Hayes was like, or someone was like, should, should I go get them or something like that? And he's like, let them go. And then Jimmy and Hayes were talking and he's like, wow, you know, why, why would they go out and do that? You know, why? Like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, it's the need to know. Oh yeah. yeah. He has like this beautiful monologue, Hayes. Um, and it's like, as they're like, Oh my God, I, I can't, re- Oh my God. It was such a beautiful, like he was monologuing as like, um, Carl was seeing Kong maybe for the first time through the, oh, yes, through yes, the wall through the and like the word, like the wit, like just what he was saying. It was like, I love them going back and forth between like the movie we were watching and the movie that they were making. Um, and it was kind of like, sometimes it would transition like from their camera view. Um, and that was kind of one of the moments where it seemed like their movie, but Hayes was monologuing, you know, Carl had no idea that this was, you know, happening. He was monologuing back right. on the ship or whatever, yeah. but it, it felt like that was the film that they were making. Um, and that, Ah, oh, man, I, I can't, I wonder if, if, if his monologue is, is on here somewhere. Cause it, it was like, he's got some pretty good quotes in here anyway. You know, we could not understand because we were too far and could not remember because we are traveling in the night of first ages of those ages mm-hmm. that are gone, leaving hardly a sign and no memories. We are accustomed to look upon the shackled form of a conquered monster, but there, there you could look at a thing monstrous and free. Mm. Man. Yeah. He, uh, I don't know. I, I, he did have, um, you know, even if he did play the, the trope, you know, for, for the character that he was just supposed to be, you know, like pretty perfectly. Um, he did have his moments. Like he did, like, I don't know. I've really, like, I enjoyed his character. Um, oh, absolutely. He, had, like, he was very wise and, you know, the things he, he was saying was, I don't know, was, man, I don't know. Just every character had, had their own strengths. It wasn't just Anne. It wasn't just, Carl, you know, it wasn't just Jack. Um, it was like Man, everyone. That's, had... that's one we haven't get, we haven't talked about a lot yet. Mm. Jack Driscoll. Mm-hmm. I like Jack. You know, I think uh, I think the romance they play between him and Anne and this, uh, and I like that it doesn't come to full fruition ever in the movie. It's just kind of a, uh, it's like it's lingering, and he's like, I'll I'll stick around basically. Like I like I, I'm always here kind of thing and you know even when he follows her to the top of the mountain and tries to get her out of king kong's hand he follows her up to the empire state building after king kong's fallen and like gives her a hug and it's just like man this is a powerful this is some powerful imagery in terms of just like i'm here for you you know and i think that's uh that's some real shit from jack driscoll there he's basically the the human version of kong in this movie uh yeah. you know Kong never gets to say, you know, that he loves Anne. You know, he's a he's a monk. I you know, I don't think that monk, yeah. would really work out, you know, that well. But but they were just, you know, uh it was a protection out of love, you know, whether you know, it wasn't about the words, you know, or whatever, you know, he uh and him like sitting in his his own play, like watching it unfold, you know, he gets offended by his own play, which I think mm. is kind of hilarious. You know, he, yeah. he storms out and leaves. But, you know, a lot of emotions. I think there's a few talk. things going on there. I think he's I think he's thinking about how stupid he was. Mm-hmm. He's like when he's like he wrote from her perspective like no, he never said anything like and like he's like fucking hey, I never said anything. Like so that's that's going there, but I think he's also probably making the connection you made. The mm. the King Kong and thing where it's like oh shit. That that's going on tonight. Anne's out there somewhere. All right, I gotta go. I gotta go find Anne, and uh, mm. like, and he goes, he goes straight to the Kong play. You know, he. D- I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty cool. And I uh, guess how long was that voyage? You know, how long were they really like traveling from from New York to Skull Island? Because I mean, it, if it was only like a few days, you know, like it, it would have been a very, very quick or kind of forced love. You know, it felt like, but they they had. It, it seemed like. I don't know. It might have been over the span of, of. I'd, I'd go weeks. You know, yeah. a voyage at sea for a mysterious island. They they were gone a while. Would be my guess. You know, they they go through this this process where like they can't find anything for a while. They're taking random mm. turns at a point. Like 
my guess is that it, they were out at sea for a while, uh, mm-hmm. much longer than they actually make it seem in the movie. Like it's it definitely, uh, I mean, they, they jam that whole journey into like the first 40 minutes mm-hmm. and, uh, and like 20 of that's not the journey. So like, it's, True. Like they, as long as the movie is, it was it was moving through stuff. Yeah, and when know, they were because... filming on the ship, um, and you have you know that first scene that they were filming with Bruce and and Anne, um, like just talking, and Bruce was like, "I changed it up a little bit, you know. I wanted to add some humor, blah blah blah." And he's like, "Yeah, we'll try not to do that or whatever." <laughs> but then he Fucking goes actors. goes you know down to Anne, and Anne's like, I- "I'm sorry, I know I didn't say what you wanted me to say, blah blah blah." And he's like, "No." Like, no, you, you did great. You know, like, you know, and they're like, they're like from there, um, was super cute. And then whenever she's out on the front of the ship crying, um, and then he walks up and she just look, you know, like just looks at him and, and they have just that, that little connection there. Yeah. Um, And, and I loved, I loved Denim in that moment being like, all right, you're fucking kidding me. My my fucking writer and actress have fallen in love. I'm going to, all right, get the fuck out of here, guy. I thought that was hilarious. Like the movie that they were filming, you know, it's there. The movie is very self-aware that exactly the movie that they're filming is, is unraveling in reality too. Mm -hmm. like kind of um, right before their eyes, whether it's with, you know, the characters that he wanted to know, um, but it happened naturally, you know, almost uh, with the crew. Um, and, and I like, and that's, you know, instead of the moment that, that Denim was looking for, and that's when she sees it, the island, you know, or whatever. But instead of the island that she sees, she sees, you know, a man that she has feelings for, but instead, Mm. you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't say the words, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't go for it. Um, and I don't know. I, I wonder, like, I wonder if I would have liked the movie more if they ended up falling in love or if it was like just good the way that it happened. I don't know. Like, I think it's, I think it's effective the way it happened. You know, I think, uh, I think the way it happens places the emphasis on Kong. Mm. Um, and I think that's the point of the movie is, is more the tragedy of King Kong than the tragedy of Jack Driscoll never mm. asking out Anne. Um, mm. you know, cause I think, uh, I think they kind of make a point that Jack will be there. You know, like, uh, Kong's the one it's not feasible to expect to stay around. True. Um, mm. man. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was, it was just tragic. You know, like I, I loved watching Anne try to like tell them no, like stop doing what you're doing whenever she realizes they're tossing chloroform at him. They're shooting a bunch of hooks into him. They're, they dropped the fucking net on top of him and like, uh, Kong's looking at her like, what the fuck's going on, huh? And she's like, like she's crying. So Kong mm. knows it's not her. She's like, it's just such a, there's so much effective communication without using words with Kong. It's crazy. Yeah. There's Kong doesn't speak a single word, you know, like at all, but you know, exactly what is being said between Anne and Kong every time. Like, you know, you just through the facial expressions, just through, you know, Kong's eyes watering up at some points, you know, and like him getting emotional. Um, hey man. And I just like, want to say, we don't get, we don't get Ann and Kong without Shaggy and Scoop. You know, we it's, don't. it all, it all relates back, you know, to, it all goes back to the OG, but, uh, I was wondering if, if you want to make any nominations. Uh, I, I've already put down, uh, Naomi Watts for, for her role. Um, yes, I, I think she's definitely deserving of best lead actress nominee there up there with Uma. Actor in this movie, could you make the nomination Andy Serkis as Kong as the lead actor of the movie? Which, you uh, know, that's funny. That's um, funny. I mean, uh, like the thing, like I think you know, to Lord of the Rings, um, like his portrayal of Gollum is much more, you know, like you can give that nomination because like Gollum has actual dialogue. Lines, and, he's and, doing you know, the crazy stuff you know and, yeah. and um not to discredit you know the facial capture and stuff that he that he did for kong here um and everything he had had to do um but i i i don't think i don't i don't know um maybe nah, yeah. if i was gonna if i was gonna yeah. nom actors in this movie i think it'd be adrian brody as jack driscoll but i don't know if that's lead actor that might be supporting um mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know that there is a lead actor. I yeah. think Adrian Brody and Jack Black are both supporting, and I don't know that Jack Black quite gets the quite gets the nod for mm. best supporting. And I, I <clears throat> for Jack Black, um, you know, I'm you know the, when I think of Jack Black, I'm thinking of Nacho Libre or School you know his rock. yeah his you know his funny roles. Um, it was nice to see him in a role that was you know sort of serious. Um, and I think you know he did. Really, he still had his Jack Black flair sometimes. You know, his facial expression. He can't, he of, can't get past um, his eyebrows, man. His yeah. eyebrows give his whole expression away. It's insane. Mm. Uh, but but I, I mean, like, I did like him in the role. You know, he was very effective as this piece of shit, blinded by greed, not, and he's not going to stop, you know? So I, di- I did really like him, but I don't know that he's, uh, I don't know that he's a uh, nom worthy up there with Ethan Hawke and Training Day and yeah. uh, and uh, Joaquin Phoenix as Commodus and Gladiator. Yeah, I don't I don't know that Jack Black and King Kong is quite on that level. I'd I'd give Adrian Brody the nod though. I think he did really effectively. You know, he didn't really have to dig deep into the bag, but he had he had a softness to him that made me understand why him and Anne would fall in love. You know, and mm. I think that's that's really important. And I think um, I think Peter Jackson is getting a. Uh... A nomination for direction here. I'd um, say so too. Just I'd for say so as well. The, you know, if, if we could give an award for best visuals, I think that it's already a lock uh, for for this decade. Uh, it feels like it, but you know, direction I feel like is 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 the closest uh, thing there. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and they did recreate the 1930s, you know, or like the Great Depression, you know, very well in, in hey, the beginning the, of the movie. Um, I straight up, as soon as I saw the first set of them in New York, went, that's getting nom for set design mm-hmm. because, and, and costume design, they brought, they brought all that to, to life well. The, uh, the era, I was, I believed we were in that era, you know, like, uh, Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson also, you know, I, I believe we're in a fantastic, we're in Middle Earth. We're, we're in this fantastical place where mm. nothing really feels real. And like, uh, this, I'm transported to a different time, you know, like, I'm like, this isn't modern. There's not a single ounce of it that makes me feel like it's modern. Even the filmmaking itself mm. feels like a 1930s or 40s movie. Like the, there's this shot of, and walking up to Kong at the end in the streets of New York and the lights are behind her and she's silhouetted out and like, uh, the way her hair fell and like the softness to her face and the, the way the light hit her. Like, I was just like, Oh my God, I'm watching a fucking 1940s movie, 1950s movie. Like this is, this is fucking beautiful. Yeah. They, I mean, I, <clears throat> if I were to pull out the single strength of this movie, if I had to pull out one thing to say, like, what, what do they do the best? It's definitely the visuals and, and camera it's work. Gorgeous. And, um, I I mean, ev- like even whenever it's there are very bad things happening on screen or like very gruesome things happening, it's still set up beautifully. Like just the um the shot of whenever Kong's fighting the T Rex and you see Anne slowly walk backwards, you know, back to mm. Kong, and Kong is like, she trusts me now, you know, or like yeah. she's she's a uh, uh, you know or beginning to take a liking to me and then you see just you know it pulls back to a wide shot of just of kong on the right t-rex on the left and you see and like slowly back and then and then they go in and fight you know i I mean it's just cool like everything is set up just so beautifully and i mean as a kid uh whenever kong uh snaps you know just completely just breaks the jaw of the t-rex like uh I, I always thought that that was like, that was sick. Like the man, th- this is like cool. Oh, this, ma- that made um, King Kong a badass. Yeah. He like, uh, I don't know. I, I feel he's a little like, I feel like he's smaller in this movie than he is in Skull Island. Oh, um, he absolutely is. Uh, but like by like 10 times. Mm, that's, that's what I thought. Like King um, Kong in the, the modern, the modern movies is like well over a hundred feet tall. That's what I thought. This is a this is a twenty five foot Kong, and frankly, you know, I like I like what they did with that story for the Godzilla versus Kong thing. You know, like you got to give him a shot. If if this King Kong faces off with Godzilla, it's fucking raps. Mm. You know, but I think it did make the visuals a lot more effective to not have him so massive. Like yeah. seeing the scale of him compared to Anne was already daunting. Mm. Uh, 
but being able to see him walk down a street, be gentle, not touch any cars, not touch any buildings, just kind of walk down the street with Anne in hand and be like, this will be okay. Mm. You know, like, and, uh, seeing him freak out and, uh, when he, when he gets outside the theater and like being able to fit inside a theater, like th- mm. there are just a lot of things that I feel like makes it more effective than, uh, than the 250 foot Kong mm. we see in Skull Island. Yeah. Nothing makes you think that he's not the king of this island still, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I'd say if there is one apex predator on the island, that's not Kong, it's the T-Rex and he takes three of them on, you know, he's yep. like, and, and the T-Rexes, they're, they're scared of him. You know, they know, like, even though that they're a T-Rex, like, they're still, they, they still have a little bit of fear of Kong when he first shows up and they're like, ah, shit, like, damn, like, we're, we're screwed here. Um, and I love, you know, after he breaks, breaks the jaw, he like, like plays with them a little bit. Like he like kind of, uh, oh yeah, like, like, yeah he's makes, like, makes all right, uh, or whatever. Uh, um, uh, and then I he did stands up bitch. on top of it. Beats his chest and, and roars he was out. he was showboating, man. That's like uh, he was like, yeah, this is my shit. I run mm-hmm. I run this place. Um, and frankly, the imagery on this Skull Island, mm. like beyond the animals, beyond the dinosaurs, like just the place itself, it was beautifully designed. The like uh the lava water the lava fall. Yes, with, uh, uh, whenever with they the, they poured like it went down the whole yes. and then it showed like the whole Dude, like that was so back and, fucking like, oh, cool man i'm that like you know if and i wish they they do- dove into the native storyline a little bit more uh like in their worship of kong or like uh how they they have peace with kong you know and kong doesn't attack them you know mm-hmm. it, it's kind of you kind of get the idea that they offer sacrifices you know like that's kind of what Anne you know, was doing with the bridge, you know, and, yeah. and stuff. Um, but I really like, that's, that's and part credit of to these natives for surviving mm. on this place. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Wow. I mean, and I remember like while Anne is, uh, first running away, you know, every turn she takes, there's danger. Um, even whenever she's like down crawling under the tree after that, like alligator, the lizard, monster yeah, was yeah. chasing her like you see those two huge centipede bug things come out you know like no matter what like where she is there is danger um on top of the log you know after they fall down then there's spiders and those world eater things like at every turn there yep. is there's danger um there's some creature that's not going to be fun to look at hmm. uh, and i thought it i thought it was funny that for like a one thing i will give the m- most recent movies credit for is the design of like the getting really creative with the design of uh, the contents of Skull Island mm. like uh, the the animals the mystical animals like uh, it's beyond dinosaur mm. it's mm. like it's like oh these are mythic creatures that I've never seen the likes of and and those are kind of the they got the brachiosaurus vibe and the t-rex vibe and the raptor vibe they 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 kind of they kind of got it on lock there with the dinosaur look and i was like all right yeah like i'll take it that mm-hmm. is very mystical but i did like like the uh the winged creatures that you saw on like uh in godzilla versus kong and shit like that like that mm-hmm. was really cool um, yeah i mean i don't i i think it was just a cool like explanation of like, oh yeah, there's still dinosaurs on earth, you know, still. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not like, um, it makes sense that if they are on an island, that it would be one be that's here. hidden away from civilization and not touched for however, however long. But, uh, they're not the first to discover this island. You know, there are, I, I was wondering like if the skulls that they first saw coming up were, you know, native skulls that they, they end up just putting there to scare people off. Or if that's like just everyone who's tried to come up here before. Right. Um, but they've obviously made sacrifices before. I don't like, I don't think they're sacrificing the native people to Kong. Um, it doesn't maybe- seem like it. And I think, I think it's also important that like Hayes and, uh, Andy Circus is lumpy. Uh, talk to, talk to Denim for a second. Like, yo, if we go there, we will not live. Which implies they've heard stories, which implies people have been there. Mm. Um, oh yeah, true. Um, <laughs> and I love that, that, uh, they're looking at the footprint and he's like, only one creature could have made the footprint this big. 
the, the abominable abom- snowman. snowman. And, the, and then someone's like, oh, we're screwed, a snowman. Like, or like, like, uh, uh, like, oh man, we're done for, man. <laughs> and when they see Kong's face on the map, you know, they thought it was a coffee stain or whatever, but then, uh, they arrive at the island, the map floats in the water. Um, mm. like, man, I, I don't know. This, even though, man, I, I hated, uh, Hated Dun- Denim. Denim? Denim. Yeah, Denim. Denim's character. Um, I don't know. I think he played the part that he was supposed to play to hate him enough. Very and, effectively. And to get, get um, the real reason, like, this movie's, you know, being made. Um, it's, it always goes back to, like, um, you know, it, the curiosity of, of humanity. Like, w- they will go do these things no matter what, but never stop and think, like, even if they should in the first place. Um and there's this thing with denim that makes me question if the movie like uh ends on the right note. Hmm. You know, he 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 walks up and he says it wasn't the airplanes, it was love. It was beauty that killed the beast. Hmm. Um and for me it's like, "Nah, bro. You killed the beast." Hmm. And I don't know if it's in that last moment, it's Carl Denim rationalizing Everything and being like, uh, ah, well, yes, it was his love for, love for Anne that made sure he couldn't be kept captive. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, you shouldn't have been keeping him captive. I think um, it was just another one of his moments of you know him not wanting to put the blame on himself, and you know he's he's right in the sense that um, if Anne wasn't a factor, I think Kong would have just stayed, you know, in a sad state and kind of oh, know, absolutely, just, just stayed there, and and you know, like. He was trying to protect protect Anne, and and that eventually, I guess, got him in in the way, you know, in harm's way. But uh, I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there's only one man to blame, you know, for for his death and for this being for him being here at all. Mm-hmm. And it's it's denim. Yeah, it was just the fact that the movie ended on that note, that it was mm-hmm. the last line. They fade from him to showing Kong's body in the street, and then cut to credits. And I guess I'm like, it seems like that's the note they wanted to end it on, like a tragic. A, a romantic tragedy sort mm. of like a uh, maybe like, it's just to show that that even though all of these people see what happened right in front of them the people in the theater that are you know that are watching that that won't you know leave their seats whenever it gets dangerous or um after kong falls down and the soldiers acting like they were the ones who took him down you know it was i think it was just kind of like even even though they saw exactly what happened like and they're missing the point entirely. I think that is the point that they're missing yeah. the point. Um, wow, that sounded very convoluted there, but, but, uh, no, yeah, no, I get you 100%. Like the point of it is that they don't get it. Mm-hmm. And that I mean, they, the only they don't, who they do, don't see man. the fault in their actions. And, and, you know, Preston, uh, he, like, after they're all back in New York and, and, uh, seeing, you know, all the fame and fortune that they're getting, like, uh, Preston, you know, he, he's standing up there. He's looking at him. He's just like disappointed. He's like, I, like I, he doesn't feel right about it. No, um, and, and well, Anne and that, that obviously doesn't. Too. Yeah, uh, there are characters who do get it, you know, in the movie. Um, but yeah, and I appreciate those characters. You know, Jack and and Preston there at the end. You know, and Preston throughout the movie is like, dude, I have no idea about mm. this. Like, this does not feel good at all or worth it in any in any capacity. But like. Mm. Then we get to the theater and it's all these rich fucking assholes, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, everyone needs to leave. Everyone needs to get out of here. Hey, I paid for this ticket, buddy. You go find somewhere else to sit. You know what, dude, I'm trying to save your life. You're sitting here in front of a 25 foot gorilla. That's about to break out of his chains because chains, because he doesn't like being in captivity. So, uh, and you're here, you paid to watch this. Mm -hmm. You paid, you paid to see this, this animal in captivity. Oh, man. I mean, don't worry. It is made of chrome steel. No way he's getting out of this. Have you Has <laughs> humanity ever held captive a 25-foot gorilla? No. You no. know, like, uh, do you really think that that's going to hold him? I, I mean, he's uh, taken out, he's killed three T-Rexes in front of, uh, like, well, not in front of, in front of them, I guess, only in front of Anne. But, uh, it was, you know, um... He tried to pay Anne any amount of money and she still turned it down. You know, she sadly had to go, you know, make money 
the way that she didn't want to, I guess, you know, in, in the first yeah. way. But then, you know, she leaves and then eventually finds Kong and like, it's just like, ah, you know, like. And when Kong's looking for her there at mm-hmm. the end and he picks up every blonde woman, looks at her <laughs> and just, and they're like, the thing that was like chilling to me was the fact that they were like screaming the whole time and then he tossed them and then you hear thump, and silence. And it was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. I mean, the, uh, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't know his own strength sometimes. Right. right? No, you yeah, know, like, I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming <laughs> Connor or anything for being a villain in these Damn, moments, yeah. but it was like a, oh shit. Yeah. So, and like, the hundreds who die in this process, like Denim's got to be locked up, man, for life. Mm. Yeah, that's, I, I, I was wondering, uh, you know, like how this would actually go in real life, you know, if we were to find this undiscovered island that that this creature does live on, you know, and I, um, and I, I feel like it's pretty spot on. You know, here yeah. that they, that we would try to do anything we could to capture it and bring it back. Um, and I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel sadly that this is, is spot on if this were to happen in oh, real certainly. life. Um, you know, you, you, you see uh, Denim after, you know, the nets over Kong after the chloroform's got him. He's like, we're going to be millionaires. You know, he's, he's going to, going to be on Broadway, the, the eighth wonder of the world. And then, you know, I'll, I'll share That's it with you guys, to. too, you know, or whatever. And then literally on Broadway, Kong, Eighth Wonder King of the World. King Kong, Eighth Wonder of the World. And, and you know, they, they have a, a Jurassic Park moment where it's like – um, the price of an admission ticket, you know, that, that's, that's what gets you to see him. And then like, you know, the whole point of it being like, like, no, like this should be for one, he shouldn't even be here. Um, should not be here in the first place. And two, if he is going to be there, like it should be like, everyone should have the opportunity to, to see and, or whatever. But man, it's just such like a, like you, you want to leave Kong alone and back on the Island, but, but how do you, like, uh, I don't know. It's just, it goes back to if they should in the first place, you know, it just, oh, yep. like, um, man, the rape of the natural world. I mean, it's, it's what, it's what Dr. Ian Malcolm was talking about, man. And I think, uh, yeah, it just made me real sad, you know, because like we do, like we have this anyway mm. on a much smaller scale mm. with, gorillas that's uh, how the movie and, opens uh, in yeah, a zoo. We, we got poachers uh, and mm-hmm. trophy hunters who mm-hmm. and like th- this isn't necessarily trophy hunting you know they're not trying to kill kong to be like yeah check out this mm-hmm. shit uh but that's that's probably the more real world equivalent to this you know we also have zoos but i feel like we're kind of getting to a place now where conser- uh conservation mm-hmm. is kind of more the goal with most places yeah. at zoos, hopefully. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is not about conservation. Mm. <laughs> this is, this is binding an animal in chains and making and profiting off people looking at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first thought is that they're going to be millionaires. You know, that, 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 are, that was Denim's first thought, at least, you know. Um, and it was the, it was the lawyer's first thought when he pulled up to Jurassic Park, you know, we're going to make millions off this. Yeah. And, but I don't know, like it got the point across, you know, and, uh, I didn't realize it as a kid, you know, I'm not thinking uh, about all this as, as a kid when I'm watching, but, but now that um, there's this, there's this really, and I've noticed through a lot of these movies that we've watched, like if you watch it through a certain lens, it's anti-capitalist. Mm. You know, like it's like we can't we can't make it our mission to capitalize on everything. Mm. That can't be the goal in every scenario. It happened in Jaws, happened happened in Jurassic Park, happens here. Like it's it's everywhere mm. across our 52-year journey through film and it's one that I it's it's a motif I just wouldn't have picked up on mm. when I when I was younger. And oh yeah. And I mean King Kong is very effective with its uh with its storytelling, with its uh, with its messaging, 
Shows how good it is. Even as a kid, it was entertaining as hell, and I didn't need all of that or even know that it was there in the first place, you know, Uh, because I'm just – Hey, and I watched this – like I remember I got this on DVD for like Christmas when (laughs) I was little. Like I remember opening my stocking and getting King Kong the DVD, and I remember watching the shit out of that DVD. Mm -hmm. And I sat over here. I got on this podcast and said I did not remember it being three hours Mm -hmm. because I watched it when I was a kid a lot. Mm-hmm. Do you know how hard it is to make a small child sit through a three-hour movie? <laughs> That's insane shit. Yeah, and I, I, it's such like it was such a different watch. It was like almost that I was watching it for the first time. Like me too. This time. I was and like, like, like man, this is a whole different movie. Like I do not you know. Like whenever, it. whenever we were jumping into this project, you know, the movies that I hadn't seen in eight plus years the movies i'd never seen there were some that i was like all right i think these are going to become one of my greatest one of my favorite movies of all time i expected it with godfather jaws the shining uh Mm. jurassic park i hadn't seen in years uh i I was expecting a lot of those to go ahead and climb up climb up the list for me king kong was not one i expected to climb up the list Mm. you know shawshank sure goodwill hunting sure yeah probably king kong dude i fucking love this movie yeah, I mean, talk about, like, we haven't had, you know, for, I think Shawshank was the last, um, the last 4-9 that we had in, in film, and, like, I, like, I haven't had a movie where I, I was like, oh, yeah, this is joining that company, you know, like, mm. <clears throat> it's definitely, like, it's up there, like, there's no way that it's not until, like, this one, I, like, while watching the visuals alone, you know, put it up there the, the story the performance like i like it's it, i'm really it, high on it you know and uh i think uh i i understand some critiques of it there's certainly there's certainly elements of the story that are dragged out it's hmm. uh it can be slow at points the action sequences can get a little long hmm. uh because there are moments where it's like look at what we can do hmm. with this visual effects shit i like, think check this shit out like the only category where this movie will fall for me I think is just as a John, like in the genre category, um, like enjoyment wise, I, like, I love this movie. I will be watching it again. Um, and as a film, I love like the direction they went. I lo- like, every, I, I think they, they executed on what they wanted and yeah, whether they got, you know, a little bit too far in and they, they wanted to put in like everything, you know, that, th- that they wanted to prove that they could do these sort of things. I like, I think it played to the strengths of the movie, though. Like it, it, it enhanced the movie. Um, oh yeah, I like that's my thing. Is like, how can you complain about too much of a, a an awesome thing? You mm-hmm. know, th- these action sequences—they're beautiful visual effects wise, and like uh, getting a little bit more of it. Like I said, I don't mind. I don't mind a three-hour movie. A, a long movie is not a critique of a movie for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I actually expect a three-hour movie to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's why Scarface was so fucking jarring. Because I was like, I don't know how that movie was three hours and I still don't get it. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still don't understand yeah. what the fuck was happening. Like, I don't I don't know why any of it happened. Uh, <laughs> King Kong, I got that whole fucking story. And it needed three, like, the story they laid out needed about three hours. Maybe two and a half, maybe two hours and 40 minutes. But I don't know what you cut. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it would have to be just minutes from action sequences where stuff happens and there's no story being developed because there's a lot of story here and I really, really enjoy it. But, yeah. uh, so like, I think this will be as far as our, uh, are we ready for the rating? Yeah, I'm ready to get in, get into it. All right. I think this will be our first five out of five in enjoyment of the two thousands. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I, there wasn't a time in this movie where I'm like, uh, like I'm just watching it to why I'm just watching these things unfold. I'm like, I am in it. I want to know what happens next. Mm. I'm, you know, gripped the whole way through. Um, and yeah, I mean, this, this is definitely a five out of five for enjoyment for me. Like God, it, it's it was like awesome. Um, no, yeah, there was no question about I, I, going into it. I'm like, yeah, this is probably gonna be like a four, you know, it's a three hour movie. I'm going to have to sit through this, whatever. But, right, but then I'm like, right. at the end, I'm like, holy shit. No, like, that kept me. Hmm. Uh, it it kept me, and I enjoyed it through and through. And to and I, frankly, I'm a sucker for a big animal character that gives me emotions. Hmm. I love love big animal character that gives me emotions. And King Kong is probably the greatest example of it of all time. Hmm. 
Yeah, um, Godzilla, you can't really relate with, you know, too not much. For real. Uh, when not for he's real. Blasting a laser into Earth, you know, through his mouth and just killing everything in sight. Um, but Kong, you know, he, he's he's the good guy. He's they he's got the, the guy human. We got a human side to Kong, yeah. you know. Um, and man, yeah, I think I just insane. Like as a kid, I I did not know that like there was facial capture, you know, for Kong. I'm just thinking like, oh, they just made this thing from from scratch or whatever. But like knowing that there's like a human behind like the face of Kong and uh it is just like is super cool that uh God Andy Circus is a talented fellow man. He's Alfred I love me some Andy Circus. Kong Gollum um Snoke yeah. Claw man dude is this dude's been around and, and he, Alfred he's getting Pennyworth. that <laughs> He is he's man yeah I he deserves it. Like he man I don't he's know a king. He's a god in this game, mm. uh, but let's head let's head to genre after the first five out of five in enjoyment of the two thousands. First since the Matrix mm. in nineteen ninety nine. Um, as a genre, it was interesting to me that you said this was the place where it fell, mm. because as far as action adventure flicks go, mm. well, when I mean fall. I mean, like, not a four nine or five. <laughs> like, I, I figured. Uh, I, I figured mean, you like, meant like maybe four seven like, five. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't uh, mean like three or, or like. No, I, I figured. Um, I figured such yeah. things, but I, as I was watching this, you know, we talked about it with Kill Bill, mm. the the action of it all, like, uh, and the the example I used was Transformers, and I was like, when we think of modern action, you know, we we often think of big explosions. Mm. Poof, this happens. This happens. Uh, this is obviously more on that side of things than it is the Kill Bill side of things. Mm-hmm. And this made me want to eat my fucking words about what I said about Kill Bill. Mm. Like I was like, I'm a sucker for this action too. This is fucking awesome. Uh, and you know these giant monsters fighting each other. God's uh, not Godzilla. T Rex versus Kong and uh, Kong on the Empire State Building fighting airplanes. There's some epic, epic action in this, and uh, the adventure aspect of the film. The first hour is the traveling, trying to find Skull Island. The second hour is trying to figure out how the fuck, uh, how the fuck we're going to get off Skull Island and exploring Skull Island, getting finding Kongs and. And then it's bringing Kong back to New York mm. and him tearing up the city on accident. You know, like that's, it's a pretty epic action adventure, uh, saga. And so like, I think, uh, I don't like, I don't know if I necessarily go genre defining, mm. you know, like I don't, I don't know about all that. I think if you're going to, from now on, if I'm going to reference someone to a visual effects spectacle of action, this is that. Like, I don't think I'd, I'd give them another example that's, <laughs> that quite, that is quite as effective as King Kong is for me. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, we gave Jurassic Park a 475 in this, you know, c- kind of a, a movie that it's closely compared to, I, I would say, yeah. in, in the same vein. Um, and I mean, Yes, Jurassic Park came out in 93, but like visually, like Kong just blows kind of Jurassic Park out of the water. Oh but, yeah, you know, like um, it takes what Jurassic Park set in motion and puts it on full display and it's greatest, greatest potential uh, mm-hmm. for the time anyway. And uh, like I was sitting there last night quietly questioning to myself if I, if I like this movie more than I like Jurassic Park. Like if mm-hmm. I, uh, Mm. And you know there there are certain elements of it where I'm like I don't I don't know you know like the score definitely not you know Jurassic Park has has the John Williams score King Kong has James Newton Howard but I don't know it's not it's not quite on that level I, don't I think. feel like uh, the only thing that would strengthen this movie is if they put a kid on that boat and they had like if if they gave Anne. or or Jack you know a kid that they had to protect as well you know like that's the part of Jurassic Park that I I think. I like the most is, mm. is, uh, their protection over the kids and like it, like it's all for the kids. Um, and you know, you have the, the mother, father or, uh, daughter, son dynamic there. Um, 
And here, like, I don't really, I think I care for the characters more in Kong, almost, um, apart from the kids than I do in Jurassic Park. I know um, I do. Yeah, we. I like I like more. Andero more than I liked any of the characters in mm-hmm. Jurassic Park. I like Jack Driscoll more than I like most of the characters in Jurassic Park. Like I think I think the problem with that movie is that the focus is on like the the main character is Grant, and I don't I don't have a great deal of love for Grant. Mm. If they would have uh, maybe if they would have played up a romance with uh, with Laura Dern, or if they would have uh, if, like if they would have instituted a little bit more of a paternal nature and mm. maybe maybe i get a little bit more of a a little bit more of a a love for grant but like i i'm i'm loving Anne as soon as i meet her i love i love seeing how jack is head over heels for mm-hmm. head over heels for Anne pretty much from the jump like it's uh it's in the subtext uh <laughs> i thought it was uh i thought it was really well done these are those were a couple of characters that it just felt very classic romance to me, hmm. like a uh, Casablanca sort of sort of vibe, you know. And I think they were going for that in the filmmaking. The look, everything, sort of indicated to me that that was kind of a that was kind of a goal. And I think they did it really, really well. Hmm. Um, yeah, but yes. So I'm as a be, genre, I'd say I'm and, around like four, seven, five, four, eight. Maybe. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm not. I'm not any. I'm not any higher than that. But I'm definitely not lower than that. Mm. I think four seven five is the floor. Mm. I think. I think probably four eight. I think giving it the bump over Jurassic Park just a little bit. I think it, it executed a little better on it. I think so too. Um, and and you know, Kill Bill we gave four seven and four seven five, and I think it did a little better than than Kill Bill with the action and and the adventure know. just elevated um, it, mm-hmm. man. Like so, that was uh. You know, we talked about Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark being like the defining adventure film. Um, and this, like, I wouldn't say this is quite that in terms of the adventure side of it, but it's, it's, it's Jaws. Mm, mm-hmm. It's like, it's, it's every bit as awesome an adventure film as Jaws for me. And, uh, you know, that, hmm. yep, look at that. Just, just about the, just about the same. We gave, we gave this the edge over Jaws and Jurassic Park for the genre. Uh, what both were four, seven fives, but, uh, Basically, just took both movies and and mashed them together. Put them together. The best it, part it of all. Turned out, yeah, it turned out that good for mm-hmm. me. Like, uh, this is amongst one of my favorite movies ever now, and I think, for my money, amongst the most underrated movies I've ever watched. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, mm. And like, that, I think that's one of the first times I'm saying that on our 52 year journey through film. Like, the most underrated movie. I. Just didn't expect it. You know, you expect it out of The Godfather, Shawshank, out of Raiders. You know, you hear those movies are talked about all the time and, and how, like, high esteem in the, that they're held. But but Kong, I don't know, people kind of treat it like a kid's movie or, or like, just something different for, for whatever I was watching reason. this with Emily last um, night, and there was a point where she was like, yeah, this is not a kid's movie. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not a children's movie. I don't know. There's so much death, like... Like and graphic death, and I like for the only death that I really remembered was like Andy Serkis's the, with the World Year, like that was just the nightmare mm. fuel. But like everything else, I'm like, oh my god, like this is like very gruesome, and they don't they don't hide it or shoot like dude get like the first dude that gets executed, like what the, the like you know st- like his head just gets hit there. Like I mean, it mm-hmm. was like they did not shy away from from really showing showing them. Not at all. It, not at all. I think that was when Emily actually said. Yeah, this mm. is not a kid's movie. Whenever he slammed that dude's head, um, I, that was the point. But uh, so so we've got a five out of five in enjoyment, a four eight out of five for the genre. How are we feeling overall critically as a film? I mean, if it's not four nine, if it if it isn't with these four eight five is the absolute floor. Um, I like I'm, it, it I'm does not you. it does not go lower than that. Uh, visually was amazing, and and the soundtrack itself, I, I think, was was still uh, really. Oh, good. It, it was still it was still baller. Like it. Don't get me wrong. I, I know Jurassic Park is a tough one to compare to. You know, mm. it's John Williams, and I've said it's probably my favorite John Williams. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, like I said, it doesn't beat John, it doesn't beat Jurassic Park soundtrack. Barely anything beats Jurassic Park soundtrack. You mm. know what I'm saying? Uh, so. It's not necessarily a critique. Mm. Uh, James Newton Howard absolutely bodied this soundtrack anyway. Uh, Visually, 
the best hey, out man, of the like, new movie uh, so far. Like, uh, like if we look if we look at this list, as far as like, I, I'm not even going like, not from a perspective of like critically mm. looking at the movie, like because I shot composition negative space da 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 like I don't know I don't know purely from just looking at it and liking what I'm seeing I'm looking at these 4 9 movies man this the godfather jaws the shining raiders shawshank these were all very pretty movies in different ways this dropped my fucking jaw with how pretty it was it was like it was like that one scene in Jurassic Park where you see Grant and the kids up in the tree with the brachiosauruses and you see the brachiosaurus feel go on for like it was like that the whole time though. Like mm-hmm. that was the whole movie. And it was fucking gorgeous the whole time. For um, three hours. <laughs> there was this fantasticalness to the imagery that mm-hmm. like just hit different. It was believable. It was like there was never a point where I was like, well that's fake. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it and you know, it is fake, but God damn, does it look good? Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I. Uh, I don't like, and the characters like they all performed well. I cared about each one of them. The story is great. Um, like I, I don't know. I think. Does it join? I think it joins this group here. Like I. The, the- only thing holding me up is that I don't know if it's as tightly written mm. as those as those movies we yeah. have up there. Like that's true. It is well written, but is it Shawshank Redemption well written? Is I guess it, in the story, yeah, that, that is. You know, we we do always say that is it's kind of the most important part of this rating, the story. Like um, I would absolutely put it at the very top mm. of the four eight five tier, but like I don't know if I can in good mm. conscience go. Mm. Yes, this is as well written every as the Godfather, aspect. and yeah, yeah. like because um, I mean, I think it was every bit as visually pleasing as those. But the story, the story, like while I did love it, I don't know if it was critically as well written as some as some other things we've seen here are. Hmm. Um, if uh, if we do give it a four eight five in the film category critically, it averages out to a four eight eight, which ties it with Jaws, Dead Poet Society, and My Neighbor Totoro. Um, and it, I mean, it puts it, puts that. it at, uh, one, two, three, four, five in sixth place, you know, tied for, for sixth place and in, in our average score and, uh, and in, and third, you know, tied for, for third amongst, uh, 13 movies in our, um, you know, and, and just the yeah. top three, but, um, I don't know that, that kind of does feel right. Um, I think I was, I was hung up on the visuals too much like that, 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 Hey, That's man. what was elevated. Strictly, that, but. Like, if I'm going strictly off visuals, uh, this is a five out of five. Like in that in that category, mm. it is a five out of five. There there is no doubt. Um, and I am perfectly willing to put it at the very top of the four eight five section. Yes. You know, like we we like to organize it within mm-hmm. the ranking. You know, we've got now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies in the four eight five. Is that? Yep. It makes it the seventh. Yeah, um, you know, we got King Kong, Jurassic Park, The Matrix, Gladiator, Goodfellas, Kill Bill, and Train Spotting. I think that fits. I think King Kong is is amongst that tier. Now, for um, enjoyment, we do have a lot of five. We have 13 five out of fives as enjoyment. This will be the 14th uh, joining joining that those groups. But do you where do you think you rated amongst enjoyment wise out of these? <laughs> Jurassic Park is is up there with Raiders and Star Wars uh, at the very top, and uh, that's what was making me go, "Hey, man, this might be third. Yeah, I think behind Star Wars and Raiders for me in terms of enjoyment. You I know, like uh, this was this was the peak example for me of the visuals just owning a movie. Mm. You know, because like uh while I did love the character, I did like, a, I, I loved Anne and I loved Jack and, uh, I loved Kong, you know, like, uh, the story didn't drop my jaw. The story, like it, it, I thought it was good. It made, it moved me to tears, but like the way Shawshank 
drop like I was like fuck that was so well written the way Goodwill Hunting made me go fuck that was so well written. Mm. This was the the inverse where I was like fuck that looked so good. Mm. Like I I finished the movie and I was like it's one of my favorites of all time based on that alone. An aesthetic an aesthetic appeal that I've just never never seen the likes of. Mm. It was so good. Yeah. I mean what what a way to kick off um the month of September. Uh, definitely starting off strong and and we have some you know it's it's kind of bookended by two visually uh stunning movies with King Kong and Avatar. visual epics um yeah. i think that's that's what these movies will be known for and will be remembered for um and yeah i i am excited for this month this is uh it's it's looking like it's going to shake out to be a good one you know we got a couple of the we got King Kong this week we got the departed for 2006 next week 2007 We'll hold American Gangster, mm. um, 2008 Wally, and 2009 Avatar. We got a couple science fiction movies at the end of the mm-hmm. at the end of the fucking month. We got a couple crime movies over the Ooh. next couple weeks. King Kong, Wally, and Avatar kind of all have a similar message, and you know, hum, uh, human greed, you know, behind Protecting, it, and yeah. and uh, you know, King Kong, they're profiting off Kong itself, Wally. Earth is donezo, you know, everyone's up on the mm-hmm. axiom, getting all, you know, everything they could ask for. That Avatar, that, uh, whatever the, the, the element is that they're unobtainium, maybe unobtainium. is what they call it. Um, yeah. and yeah, I, very, uh, early 2000s, you know, the, the getting into, getting in, into that, which I, I don't know, this month, month is going to shake out to be, to be really, really good. Hey, and this decade is going to shake mm. out to be even prettier. This is, a. Uh, this will be nice. The end of September will mark the end of the decade, which is nice and neat. Mm. Um, which I which mm-hmm. I really enjoy. In October, we'll start the 2010s. Um, and, very know, very excited. Decade does also include the greatest film of all time, um, Scooby Doo. Uh, that's Scooby Doo. So, uh, I mean, this is. I mean, we talked about we talked about the visual marvel that is King Kong, and I talked about how it might be visually my favorite movie of all time. It should be implied. It should go without saying that that's that's bar Scooby Doo. Yeah. Whenever whenever we talk about the rest of the movies that follow two thousand two, even before, um, you should know it, that it's in a league of Scooby-Doo. its own. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's uh we're we're not really taking Scooby Doo into account here. Uh, it's not fair. Uh, it's not fair. It's movies. just not fair to compare. You know, like and, and I don't think there's a bias there, like, but. You know, some might say, some might say that's the case, but I, I'm pretty comfortable with our five out of fives across the board for Scooby Doo. Mm, yeah, um, of course, it, it deserves even better if we could. Um, so. I, I'd give it six out of five if I if I if I was capable, mm. you know. But that's that's it's out of my hands. Um, this is God's work. Um, but yeah, King Kong, man, what what a fucking addition to this 52 year journey through film. A, a movie that I did not anticipate would reach my top 10 favorite movies of all time but i tell you i'm sure as shit gonna watch king kong again and probably sooner than later i finished like do you know how hard it is for me to watch a three-hour movie finish a three-hour movie and then go fuck man i don't feel like watching anything else but that three-hour movie again Mm -hmm. Uh, like i i I ended up falling asleep but i turned it on again i was like i'm just gonna fall asleep to this this time Mm. because i was like god damn i loved that uh this is the biggest surprise on the list so far. Um, and I, I don't think any other movie is going to surprise me as much as, uh, as King Kong did. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. I'm expecting plenty from the rest, but, uh, hell yeah. King Kong at a 4.88 out of five. And with that, we conclude this episode of the Penny Bloom podcast. If you would, Head to patreon.com slash corobloom where you'll find over 24 hours of exclusive content, fund the revolution, and keep this podcast going. Uh, it costs money, and I don't make any off of it, except there, at Patreon, so that's a huge help. And then if you would, head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, uh, follow on Instagram, at Penny Bloom Podcast. I was Colton Robertson, and I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And monsters belong in B-movies.